go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Galatians 22. We'll read the verse in just a moment. Uh, but while you're getting there, I did want to share, you know, in testimony time, I, I try not to get up. I could share something every time, right? I mean, I really could because God has done so much. Uh, in my own life. And so, as I said this morning, you know, Saul is a great example uh, to, to, to God's glorious salvation. And, you know, he was a, a persecutor of the church, a persecutor of Jesus. And I simply made the statement, God desires everybody to be saved. And if he can save Saul, he can save y'all. And, uh, and so, and he can save me and he can save anybody. And that's really his heart. He wants to save folks. Uh, but I could share testimony all the time. I mean, God has continued to bless us. I believe he's blessed in obedience. I truly believe that uh, with all my heart. Uh, we had uh, Brittany and Jeff join last week. Uh, and, and this morning we had three more uh, join our church family. And so God just continues to bring people uh, into uh, Living Waters lives. Uh, and we pray that we would stay uh, humbled. Uh, buy it, but also stay obedient and just uh, be comfortable and confident that God has called us to be a church, uh, that we're going to be obedient to God's word, uh, and we're going to love people and love each other and, uh, and love the Lord. And so I'm thankful for all that he's doing. Uh, but if you have your, your, your Bibles there at Galatians chapter 5, 22, I, I just ask you to stand as we, we read this one verse. Again, we're, we're going through the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, the kids are doing the same thing, so, so we're, 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 that way you can talk to them. Uh, when you're around the kitchen table and the dinner table, you can talk and uh, ask each other, what, what did you learn? Uh, but remember, it's not as much about as what you learn as what you obey. Uh, it won't change nothing if you don't obey it. Folks say, well, I, I read God's Word. That's good. Uh, I know God's Word. Well, that's good. So does the devil. Um, it's about do you obey it? Is it truly transforming who you are? And so um, we should be exhibits of the fruit of the Spirit. And so in verse 22, it's interesting before we read that, if you read on up and take a look at it, uh, maybe this week in your spare time, he goes through a whole lot of what the flesh expresses. The works of the flesh that are evident, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, and so forth. So it's interesting, those things, uh, outburst of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, envy, drunkenness, revelries, or the like. Um, it's interesting, that is what the work of the flesh expresses. But when you get to the Holy Ghost of God living inside of you, this is what should be expressive in your lives. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. We'll talk about peace tonight. Long-suffering, your translation may have patience there. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Uh, we'll get to self-control eventually, but I'll say that one's the tough one. Because most folks speak before they think. Act out before they realize they're acting out. That's why folks don't want to be around them. So if, you got, if, if you're in a situation where folks don't want to be around you, the first thing you might want to say is, am I expressing and exhibiting? Am I a fruit stand? Remember, I said, we're just fruit stands. And if we're not exhibiting those things, no wonder folks won't be, won't, don't want to be around you. Just saying. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray, Lord, tonight. Show us, God, what you want us to learn from peace. Lord, we know you are the Prince of Peace. God, you want us to have peace. You knew we have tribulation in this world. It's nothing new to you, nothing new under the sun. But we can still have peace regardless if we know you. Lord, speak to our hearts. Encourage us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is peace tonight. And I've entitled this message, Peace Instead of Pieces. Peace Instead of pieces, I, I hope that you've figured what, that, what we're going to talk about tonight with that. I'd rather have peace than to be falling apart in pieces. Amen? And what we're, we're studying the fruit of the Spirit in our summer series. We'll end in September. Uh, the last time we looked at the trade of joy. Now, I mentioned when we kicked this off, this series off, Paul sort of cataloged these nine traits into three buckets. Uh, it, it may be, as, as some have suggested, that Paul's first bucket is love, joy, and peace. 
was, from, was a familiar watchword among the early Christians comparable to faith, hope, and love. And so clearly these three graces, these three attributes, uh, cover the whole range of Christian existence. The fabric is built, uh, really built up story upon story. And love is the foundation, joy is the superstructure, then peace is the crown of it all. And so just as true joy cannot be gauged by the absence of unpleasant circumstances, we talked about that last time, we ought to have joy regardless of what we're going through. Paul said rejoice always, so neither can peace be defined in terms uh, of, of what we deal with in life. The Hebrew conduct, concept of shalom is much more positive than that, referring to a condition to wholeness and well-being that includes both a right relationship with God and loving harmony with one's fellow beings. And so when Paul spoke both of peace with God, the consequences being justified by faith, that's how we have peace with God, which transcends all understanding, by the way. Christians are called to be peacemakers, both within the family of faith and throughout the broader human community. We are called to do that. Paul admonished believers to make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. Chris just talked about edifying the saints, edifying the body, edifying the believing uh, the, the believers. But it, it's the duty of Christians to seek peace with all men on the principle of righteousness. Now listen, we should seek peace. That's the goal. However, the Bible also speaks of where there are times that peace is not workable. It's just not workable. In those times, we're to please the Lord with whatever he calls for us. And that'll probably include praying for the situation, even though peace isn't workable. And so the simple takeaway is believers can have peace because of Jesus Christ. Now, John the Baptist, a man uh, that knew who he was, he was confident in who he was. I mean, he was, he was eating uh, the natural foods before natural foods was, was cool, right? He's eating the honey out there and the locusts. I mean, I don't know what a locust tastes like, but uh, uh, anyway, he must have enjoyed them. <laughs> But he, he was different. He was confident, though. He was godly. He was blessed. He, he baptized Jesus. Put, he's put in prison and eventually lost his life for the sake of Christ. And all this, he still had peace. And so I'd ask you tonight, ponder, do you have that kind of peace? I want to give you a few principles tonight concerning peace that you can have. An aspect of the fruit of the Spirit that, again, we can exhibit. Uh, the first thing is the foundation of peace. Now, this series is a little different. Normally, I go expositionally through the text. This is more topical. But the foundation of peace is the first thing. The foundation of peace is the first thing. The Bible has much to say about peace, but the first thing we need to know is where it comes from. If you don't know where it comes from, then you'll be searching to and fro. You'll be putting uh, emphasis on things you don't need to be putting them on because you'll be searching for peace in the wrong things. And so the Bible says in Romans 5, therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. The first thing is peace with God. You won't be able to have peace at all unless you're at peace with God. Now, Agent Rogers says it this way. That means the war is over. The hostilities have ceased. Jesus has conquered. We have surrendered and there's peace with God. That's what, that's, that's what Saul did. He finally got peace with God. Ephesians 2, 14 says he himself is our peace. Who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 33. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. He desires peace. And Hebrews 13, 20 says, now may the God of peace. There it is. It comes from God. Who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. And then Paul talks about it over in 1 Thessalonians. May God himself, the God of peace, there it is again, sanctify you through and through. I like the way Ken Witten says, says, you can't have the peace of God until you have peace with God. That's a good word. You cannot have the peace of God until you've got peace with him. Now, is Jesus the center of your life? Can I ask you that tonight? And you can nod your head yes, but I want you to ponder it. Is he truly the center of your life? He, he is, 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 ask yourself, is he the very heartbeat? Of my being. Is, if he is, then I'll tell you, you've got the ability to have peace. No matter what you may be, you might have walked in here almost in pieces tonight, but can I tell you, you can leave out of here in peace. You can. If you allow Jesus Christ to be the center of it all, he's the foundation of peace. The only way you have peace with God is the same way you get the peace of God. The only way you can have peace with God is the only way that you can do that is through Jesus. 
You'll, you'll never have peace with him. You can try to work it out, and you'll be working till the cows come home. Y'all know how long that is? A long time, especially if you ain't got no cows and you're waiting for them to come. <laughs> Sheila's over there in Sheila town. That's the only way you can have peace. And so the foundation of peace is Christ. But I want to spend a little bit of time on the focus of peace. The focus of peace. Now look, if we're going to live with peace and in peace. See, living with peace and living in peace is, the same, is two different things. Then it's a choice to focus on peace. And I want you to understand it comes in two different places. The head and the heart. It comes in the head and the heart. Now, the first, the head. Focus in your mind. Now, Colossians 3, verses 1 through 2 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Now, let's just stop right there. Most of the time, the reason people don't have peace in this world is because they are looking for peace in the wrong thing. They're chasing after things they think will give them peace. Oh, if I could just make enough money. Listen, if you don't learn how to spend it, it won't matter how much you make. Amen? Amen. Y'all all right? Uh-huh. Hit your pocketbooks now. I saw y'all. Some of you just winced. It don't matter if you make a million dollars if you spend a million and one. You're still in the hole one dollar. Got any mathematicians in here? Since then you've been raised with Christ. Seek those things which is above, which Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. That ought to give you peace tonight. Knowing that there's someone interceding for you right now. Set your mind, there it is, on things above, not on the things of the earth. That is easier said than done, by the way. I'll just tell you, it's easier said than done than for myself. But I'll tell you how, how I'm getting better at it. Didn't say I was good at it yet. I said I'm getting better at it. As I keep thinking, all the things that I wish I had is going to waste away one day. That makes me feel better, <laughs> at least for a bit. Isaiah 26 says this way in verse 3, one of my favorite verses in the whole scripture. Thou wilt will, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Can I ask you tonight, is your mind stayed on thee? We don't have, look, we don't have peace sometimes because we're not stayed on thee. We're not focused in our mind. We're not focused on God. Our minds are not focused and saturated in the Lord and with the Lord. It's the carnal things of the world that's got our, our minds cluttered up. Many times people live in a manner of unrest, unhappiness, unsatisfied. Sometimes they're, 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 there's this lure of the devil has thrown your way. By the way, he's got a lure for every one of us. He does. He's got a lure for every one of us. You go to people who are restless people, and, and it rubs off. You ever notice if you start hanging out with folks that are, un, that are, that are un, just have a lot of unrest, they have a lot of problems, they, they just aren't satisfied in life, sometimes it rubs off on you. Then the next thing you know, you, you having your own little pity party. Sometimes it's your flesh, though. It's not always the devil's lure. Sometimes it's just your flesh. And nature that you're battling. Some people won't allow themselves to live with peace because they feed and thrive off drama. Y'all know any drama queens? I knew a few drama kings. Matter of fact, I, I'm thinking of a drama king and queen right now. Good night. It's my head up. <laughs> Tammy said, yours. <laughs> Sometimes people thrive off drama. I'm not one of those people. I don't like drama. I don't even like to watch real dramas, let alone fake ones. Sometimes it just means you'll have to get past what happened in the past. Sometimes you just got to get past what happened in the past. Many people drag things around all their lives believing it's going to help them cope with it. When in all actuality, it just gets heavier to carry. And by the way, the older you get, it gets harder to carry as well. And by the way, when you're dragging it around, it keeps the problem around. Y'all ever notice that? I've told y'all before, Tam's eyes, we've we, we tried to help couples before. And they just have baggage, they're just dragging up for 20 years. They'll bring something up that 20 years ago. They've already talked about it like every year for the last 20 years. But they'll bring it up again. I'm like, good night. 
That's why it keeps hanging around because you keep dragging it around. You need to let that go. Philippians 3, 13, 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so ingly ensnares us, entangles us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Look, looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Your translation might say, fixing your eyes on Jesus. There is a focus that we need to have if we're going to have peace. And that focus needs to be on the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. I heard one person say, my relationship with God is my number one focus. I know that if I take care of that, God will take care of everything else. That's a good word. I heard somebody else say one time, this old preacher said, when you fix your thoughts on God, God fixes your thoughts. That's a good word. (laughs) When you fix your thoughts on God, God fixes your thoughts. See, our minds are free from worry when our eyes are fixed on Jesus. Our minds are free from doubt and unbelief if we'll trust God. Our minds are free from fear. You don't have to live in fear. Matter of fact, the Bible says the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear at all. So you don't have to live that way. Got to fix your eyes. Got to focus your mind. You also got to focus your heart. Focus in on your heart there. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. The problem is folks seeking God half-hearted and think he's going to take them all the way. That ain't going to work. Jeremiah, he goes on to say to in Jeremiah 24, chapter, I mean, chapter 24, verse 7. says, I'll give them a heart to know me, for I am the Lord, and they will be my people. And I will be their God, for they will return to me with their whole heart. Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. See, the believer is to have a heart uh, that's ruled by God's peace. See, a, a person can only experience true peace as they come to know Christ. And only Christ can bring real peace to the human heart, the kind of peace that, del- that brings deliverance and assurance to the soul. So the choice is up to us. The choice is up to the believer. The believer does not automatically have the peace of Christ. You got to choose it. He or she is supposed to, but may not. This is a command which demands obedience. You see, when you start looking at that Greek word for peace, it means an agreement or a pact or a treaty or a bond. Whereas the Hebrew concept of peace means an attitude of peace of, or rest or security. So when you start looking at that, that, that verse that we read, read, let the peace of God rule your hearts in Colossians 3. That word translated rule is an athletic term. Uh, it means to preside at the games or distribute the prizes. It means to be or act as an umpire. Y'all, y'all watch baseball. I don't watch Major League Baseball anymore. I don't watch NBA or NFL either. I, I, I let, they make all that money and want to complain. I, they ain't going to get my time. Now, I'll watch Alabama football. Hallelujah. Praise God. Roll Tide. (laughs) Where's Jay when I need him? (laughs) But baseball, I like to watch college baseball. I really do, especially in the World Series. It just got over. And and, and, and LSU won again. And uh, anyway. (laughs) Squirrel, right? But anyway. I was watching, and, and, and the umpire dictates a lot in the game. Did you know that? The umpire dictates a lot. The, uh, the umpire calls balls and strikes. And so a pitcher, some of them pitchers are getting upset. The corner has plates, by the way. Did y'all know that? The, the plate has a corner, I mean. Yeah, I was, I was making sure y'all listen. Plate has corners, right? And, 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 and so the umpire dictates the ball in strike zone, right? So if it's going to be a strike, he's going to dictate where that ball has to come across the plate to be a strike. Sometimes they got their own strike zone. When I was growing up, my daddy said it's from the armpits to the knees, right? That's where it should be. Not to this guy. It was from head to, to, to dirt. <laughs> so the batters is up there and they got to swing at anything. 
Many of them swinging at nothing. They was waiting up there for a walk. You cannot hit the baseball unless you get the bat off your shoulder. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? But this ruling and reigning, the umpire has control. This passage is telling us somebody's got to have control. It's got to be God. It's got to be God. Otherwise, your heart will be tossed to and fro. Means to let the peace of Christ be the deciding factor in all situations and circumstances. I like the way William Barclay says, he says, let the peace of God be the decider of all things within your heart. See, the choice is up to the believer. The decision is whether we're going to let, look, the decision is whether we're going to let the peace of Christ rule. So what's ruling? Is it going to be Christ and the peace that he gives you? Or is it going to be what you desire is going to rule your heart? To be willing to let Christ handle all things through the rule of his peace. And so the peace of Christ is both a state and an experience. It's both a fact and a feeling. Anytime I have a decision to make, I need somebody to rule. I need somebody to be the umpire. And I need to say, go and stop. And I need somebody to say, you're inbounds and you're out of bounds. And I need somebody to say, this is fair and this is not fair. And then can I tell you, if I listen to myself, I'll stay out of bounds. You know why we need to let the peace of God rule? Because it's consistent. The peace of God isn't determined on how I feel today. The peace of God is consistent. It's the consistent that 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 He's got His side, and His side is the only one that matters. It's why I look at these two things. When I look at how I, how, how I live life and, and, and how I'm going to allow the peace of God to rule. Number one, I say, is it consistent with Jesus? Am, am I and Jesus on the same side? That's, that's important. And then the second thing I ask myself is, will it leave me with a deep and abiding rest in my heart? Will it give me peace? It says, in your hearts. Now, the heart's the region where the ruling power is exercised and takes effect. It's why when I hear people say, just follow your heart, I cringe. Because the Bible says, the heart's full of wickedness. That's the last thing you need to be following is your heart. It embraces the will and the affections as distinguished from the intellect. It's the choosing faculty as distinguished from the knowing faculty. So literally sometimes... Your mind might be saying stop, but the wickedness in your heart might be saying go, and you go. Even though in your mind, your mind saying, what are you doing? Y'all ever been there? When I've got a disagreement with someone, it don't happen often, but every now and then it'll happen. It's not my emotions that control my thoughts or my actions. I try not to let it be. Not perfect sometimes. But I try not to let it be. It's Christ's peace. When I got a disagreement, I try to say, where's Christ's peace in this? By the way, sometimes Christ's peace will allow you to say some things that need to be said, by the way. Sometimes you just need to tell folks where they're off base. They're out of bounds. And the And the the peace of Christ is is giving you the opportunity to do that. One Wiersbe says it like this. He says it well. When there is a peace in the heart, there will be praise on the lips and you'll be thankful. The Christian out of God's will will never find. They'll never be found giving sincere praises. When David covered up his sin, I know this because he lost his peace and his praise, the Bible says. Then when he confessed his sin, his song returned. There has to be a focus on peace. It's got to be in the mind. It's got to be in the heart. It's got to be both. Last thing we see is the fruit of peace. Told y'all we fruit stands, right? Just exhibiting fruit. Anybody in here want to be exhibiting rotten fruit? 
I don't buy rotten fruit. So don't expect folks to buy it either. When you're exhibiting rotten fruit, they ain't going to take that. They ain't going to want to look at it. They ain't even going to want to taste it. The fruit of peace. The Bible says, in the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts. There it is. And your minds in Christ Jesus. Guard your hearts. That's your emotions. And by the way, that's a military term. Guard. You better be militant when it comes to guarding your hearts and your mind. Because there's an adversary out there that ain't playing games. He ain't playing games. He's out to win. And he'll do anything and everything to win. And he doesn't fight fair either. This ain't a fair war. To guard your hearts, it says. That's your emotions. Guard your minds. Obviously, that's your thoughts. In Christ Jesus. So let me ask them. Who are you taking your worries to tonight? That's really what gives us unrest is the worries of the world. So who are you taking your worries to? Fruit of peace. I wrote down a few names here that reminded me of exhibiting peace. I mean peace in the midst of very difficult times in life and seasons. It's a couple of ladies and one man that, uh, that I've pastored over the years uh, and all of them are living minus one. Miss Shelby Snyder is a lady. She's probably in what, close to 90 now maybe? She is the epitome of peace. No matter what's going on in her life. She'll call Tammy. She'll call me. She's in a rest home. Broke her hip. I mean, you'd have thought she's, she, she's, she, she, everything was awesome. Yet she's laying in the bed with her hip broke. She exhibit. She exhibit peace. One of her best friends, Miss Margaret. Same way. And then there was a guy that passed away and I didn't get a chance to know him a long time, but he was the jolliest guy. But his name was Mr. Willie. Miss, Miss Kathy, you know who I'm talking about. He loved a ribeye steak. Me too. This guy didn't have a care in the world. And yet, he's struggling with help. Ended up passing away about 12 years ago. But every time I saw him, he had a smile on his face. And he had something good to say. He never moaned and groaned. He had something good to say. Mr. Buddy was like that too. Miss Sue Geringer is like that. Miss, 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 Mr. Buddy's wife, she's still living. Mr. Buddy passed away last year. Mr. Benny too. Mr. Benny too. He used to come down right there. Remember that, Miss Jane? He'd come right down there, Mr. Benny. Always had a smile on his face. Didn't matter what was going on around him. Always had a smile on his face. There's something to be said about true peace. See, a sense of peace that you cannot explain. How can these people live life with all the things that they're going through? And not be falling apart. See you either know it or you don't. A peace that passes all understanding. Did you know the Greek word used about 90 times in the New Testament. Carries the meaning of an inner calm. An inner calm inside you. When everything outside of you. Is in total chaos and out of control. I want you to think about that. It has the, the, the meaning of an inner calmness. Inside of you when everything external is out of control. Psalm 56 and 13 says, For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of light. 
Psalm 66 in verse 9 says, He has prepared our lives and kept our feet from slipping. Proverbs 4, 26, Give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all ways. Peace has a lot to do with where you go and where you allow yourself to go. That's physically and mentally. Can I tell you, when you live in pity party land, that's where you'll live. Don't expect the pity party land to become something else. It's called pity party land. It's going to be pity party land, which means all that happens in pity party land is what's going to happen in pity party land. What's happening in pity party land? A party that's got full of pity. Just saying. So don't expect it to be some great party. It's called a pity party for a reason. Ain't nothing going on there but pity. Yeah, Sheila said, how many people go to us? A whole bunch. Oh, oh, a, a bunch of people have a solo party. That's what it is, right? Nobody's going. To, ain't nobody joining that party. You might have one or two that want to show up. I don't want to go to that for sure. Pity party. That's I got. I got issues. Trust me, I got issues. Just ask my wife; she tell you I got issues. But having a pity party ain't one of them. I don't throw them. I don't throw them. Ain't nobody coming anyway, like Sheila said. Peace is not falling apart in the winds of adversity in life. It's a lifestyle. Saying it's a lifestyle that is ruled by the very nature of the living God. Peace is resting in the sovereignty of God, knowing that he is truly in total control. And in that truth, I can find rest. Charles Spurgeon said it this way, and we've heard it said many times by other people. A Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Spend some time in the word. Rest on the promises of God. You have peace. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I did, not, I did not give to you as the world gives. Now, that's interesting. It's not the kind of peace that the world gives. And as someone well said, therefore, it's not the kind of peace that the world can take away. So remember that. It is a peace that the world can't take away. The, the world can't give you the peace, and the world can't take it away when you got it, no matter what's going on. We just sung about it. I got Peace like a river. It's a supernatural peace Donnie talked about. It's the peace of God that passes all understanding. Y'all know that song, It Is Well With My Soul, right? When peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like beat sea billows roll. Two different things there. When peace like a river turn my way, that's, that's the kind of peace I want. I mean, the river's beautiful. It comes from a higher source. It just keeps on flowing. We say, Lord, give me that peace like a river. But there's another kind of experience that that song talks about. Sorrows like sea billows roll that's things that engulf us the waves that are coming over our heads and we just can't seem to catch a break in the waves we know the story of the man who wrote that song whatever my lot that has taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul. It don't matter what's going on around you. If you've got the Lord Jesus Christ and he saved you, you got an opportunity to have peace. It'll be on you whether you have it or not. I wrote this little acronym down and we'll finish up. Peace. P-E-A-C-E. Peace. Provision. Encouragement. Assurance. Comfort and expectation. Provision. Can I tell you, the Lord will provide all you need. He will provide all you need. 
encouragement. The Holy Ghost of God inside of us gives encouragement through his word and through the people of God. There's assurance there. God's word has many promises that can stand no matter what the situation or circumstance. We can sing blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. There's assurance we can have. There's comfort. Can I tell you in times of trial and tribulation, Jesus, our Savior, promised us the coming of the Holy Ghost. We have. You look up that term, it's the comforter. We have the comforter living inside of us. That ought to encourage you tonight. And then expectation. The Bible tells us what happened in the, listen, it tells us what happens in the end. I mean, can I tell you, we win. Turn over there. If you, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you win. I mean, there's a heavenly expectation of where eternity will be spent. And that's with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't have to live in fear, unrest, or worry. Jesus Christ promised he's coming back to get his children one day. Thought about that song, The Midnight Cry. I'm just in a singing mood tonight, but I won't sing. But can I tell you, there's one day when the trumpet's going to sound. And he's coming back. And I'm telling you, whether we get called home in the rapture or natural death takes us to heaven. On the authority of God's holy inspired word, the expectation of heaven should give us supernatural peace. Amen. Well, on behalf of our pastor, Terry Smith, and the entire congregation of Living Water Baptist Church, I want to thank you for listening to this online message. We pray you have been encouraged and challenged. We at Living Water believe that every time God's word is communicated, it requires a response. The Bible tells us in James 1.22 that we are to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So what response do you need to make to be faithful to what you've heard? You can let us know by emailing us at decision at lwbctriad.org. Maybe you need to repent of your sins and trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or possibly you've already been saved, but still need to be baptized. Or you want to join our faith family here at Living Water through church membership. Or you simply need us to pray for you. Whatever the need, be sure to email us at decision at lwbctriad.org. We can't wait to minister to you. And before you go, don't forget that you can keep up with everything happening at Living Water by visiting us online at www.lwbctriad.org. And you can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash lwbctriad. Well, God bless you. Thanks again for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you in person this Sunday.